going on guys uh today we're going to be doing an updated builds guide video so my my previous video i went over like a, a bunch of different types of builds but now that the season has progressed a bit further i kind of want to update the guide that way you know because things have changed and some classes have changed some other classes have changed as well which has affected our our talent selections and our options and what should be viable or what is like what what's bad to use now and so i'm gonna go over three main builds and i and then i want to go over the the shaman build separately so th that'll be on its own but before we jump into all of the talents i just want to say i've i've been trying to do more commentary on some videos but i've been having to work through some audio issues and it's also kind of difficult for me because again I have like a full-time job, a house, lots of, lots of responsibilities, right? And so I don't always get the luxury of being able to use my microphone with my camera and stuff while I play. And so I still want to make sure I'm uploading videos. That way you guys get to see just Elemental Shaman combat and PvP. And I, I try to do a wide variety of different types of PvP too. Uh, that way you get to see Elemental Shaman not just in like one aspect, which is another topic that I think would be... For another video which is how whenever someone talks about whether or not a class is strong or weak it seems to always be about like 3v3 or something or someone's always talking about solo shuffle it's like well what about like the broad scope of their pvp capabilities right what about rbgs battlegrounds 2v2 3v3 world pvp solo shuffle there's so many different types of pvp that like you have to be able to analyze it in every aspect because then you, you don't really know whether or not you should nerf or buff something. Because if you, if, you, if you nerf or buff a certain ability, it might make it stronger or like useless in another category. So that's something that you need to be careful about. And I think we'll save that for another video. I, I do have my audio issues fixed now, so I should be able to do some more commentary. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into these talent builds. So... This is my main talent build. This is my default Lava Burst build. So as you can see, we're running Skybreakers here. We're running Primordial Surge, which now that Primordial Surge got nerfed, Splintered Elements is another good choice, which it was a good choice before too, but this it's more about your, like your play style now, like what you like. So I've been kind of like alternating between them because sometimes I like the additional haze. Sometimes I just like the instant the ability to instantly use a lava burst when I use primordial wave, but these are these are more so just uh, preference. So I want to go over each build separately. So this is my main build, right? My main lava burst build. I have a stormkeeper build and an elemental blast build. This is more so like the one shot mechanic. This isn't as viable as the first two. I will put out there. I haven't seen like almost any shamans in the top ranks of solo shuffle or 3v3 that have been running the elemental blast so that's not to say that it's not good or viable and again it might be a lot better in something else like 2v2 we will go over the weaknesses of the ele elemental blast build when we get to it and we'll go over why it's not as viable as the first two but there's just really three main builds the the main lava burst stormkeeper and elemental blast so going down the the lava burst build there isn't really anything that has changed from my first two build videos which you can check out in the description down below the only real things that i think have changed from like maybe the first video i put out would be maybe like ancestral Wolf affinity and primordial bond these are just too strong not to take especially with like how much health we have now and how like healing surge even with the 15 percent buff it just doesn't feel very good especially in arena because like every single class has an ms effect so healing is already like just very very bad for uh for shaman and it's pretty funny because i've done a lot of solo shuffle matches yesterday and every single time i was the lowest i think i think i was the lowest healer every single time across the dps so that's all melee all casters like every single class except for maybe boomkin i i was the lowest healing dps <laughs> so, and so i just think that's really funny especially when they buff healing surge as compensation for a nerf for damage i don't know but uh yeah so nothing's really changed just 
you know, the, sa the same default build, but I want to go over why this build works. So that's something I'm going to do too, is I want to break it down and talk about why these builds are strong, okay? So the reason this Primordial Wave build is strong is because you have stuff like Deeply Rooted Elements and Primordial Surge, Skybreakers, all, all this fire damage builds very nicely around each other. So you have Fire Elemental, which allows you to deal uh, faster Flame Shock ticks, and they last longer. Um, you have Flames of the Cauldron, which also reduces the cooldown of Flame Shock, and it deals damage faster, combined with that. And then you also have Control of Lava, which also makes it faster, and it gives it a little bit of Dispel Protection. So Control of Lava is like your one necessary talent. You always have to run it. And so, like, these three things here pair very nicely with Skybreakers, which allows your Flame Shocks to crit, so now they're ticking faster, they have a higher chance to crit, and then every time they crit, they also reduce the cooldown on your Elementals, which, as you have your Elementals out, you deal damage faster, and they last longer. So it's like this really nice cycle of supplemental talents. And then, you know, Primordial Bond works nicely with this too, because the more you have your Elemental out, the less damage you take. It's only 5%, but still, 5% can make the difference, trust me. And now, when your Flame Shocks are ticking faster, you have a faster chance to trigger Lava Burst. Your Primal Elemental, so now that you have more Elementals out, you can use your Elemental Meteor more. So, in case no one knows, um, your Fire Elemental and your Earth, your Earth Elemental both get an additional ability with this talent. Your Earth Elemental gets a stun. And your fire elemental gets a meteor and if you haven't seen some of my videos i've had very high hitting meteors like i had a uh, 100k was one of my highest i've seen some posts on twitter for like 160k and so like all this is fire damage too and you have a lot of these modifiers which increase your fire damage so this is very good burst it's like one of the only abilities in the game for shaman that are off the global cooldown you got magma chamber so every time your flame shock deals damage it increases the damage of your earth shock up to 20 times so this got nerfs this is only one and a half percent in pvp um so now that your flame shocks are ticking faster this is triggering faster uh you got deeply rooted elements so every time you cast a lava burst you have a seven percent chance to basically do a primordial wave you send out lava bursts to all the targets and it increases your lava burst damage while you're ascended to an amount equal to your crit chance so very 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 strong proc probably one of the strongest procs in the game i would say echo chamber just a point in here for elements overload damage it would be nice to have two but you just can't really get a talent anywhere and then obviously the main build the, the primordial wave so you dot up your targets with flame shocks and then you use primordial wave and then this allows your let your next lava burst to hit every single target for 80 percent of the damage right and so now that you're getting your flame shocks out faster with flames of the cauldron you can keep these primordial waves pumping and then you're rolling magma every time you get those overloads and your lava burst it reduces the cooldown on your primordial wave and then obviously primordial surge which is nice because now you get some guaranteed instant cast lava surges but splintered elements is also very good because it increases your haste so if you can get out like three or more lava bursts obviously like three and 3v3 then uh you'll you'll get like basically a mini lust for 12 seconds that's pretty good and you know that, that's that's very strong and then the last real bit of this build this surge of power i want to talk about later is ice fury so ice fury is very good in this build because with all this fire damage now you're kind of like locked into one school right so say you don't have a lava burst like a proc like a lava surge proc and you have to hard cast one or you don't have any abilities and you're trying to cast something else this gives you another school of magic to cast in so that way if you get kicked you can cast your ice fury or you can also use ice fury as a juke in order to get a free cast on a hex or something so you don't always need to cast ice fury for it to be useful which is nice and then this pairs nicely with Flux Melting, so now whenever you cast a Frost Shock, it increases damage of your next Lava Burst. So you always want to try to use a Frost Shock before your Primordial Wave Burst in order to increase, increase its damage, but not necessary. The other thing too is this doesn't have to be an Ice Fury buffed Frost Shock, it can just be a normal Frost Shock. So that, that's very good too. 
And then the other reason this is nice, because now you have some, if you get your Ice Fury cast off, you got four very hard hitting Ice uh, Frost Shocks that also generate Maelstrom. So that way, if you're running around a lot, or if you, you see a, an event coming up that's going to lead you into wanting to run around a lot, you can pre-use this, and then you have some strong Frost Shocks to use to generate some Maelstrom and some uh, free instant cast damage. And then another another thing with Primordial Wave, too, is that you can use this on yourself, right? So you can see here it says, or heal an ally. A really nice trick you can use with Primordial Wave is say you have, like, two Flame Shocks up, you don't want them to know that your burst is coming, right? You you want to, because it's pretty obvious when you're burst when you're bursting the primordial wave, because you send out like this massive green fucking wave to, towards your enemy. So especially if your enemy's ranged, that this is going to be the most useful. So instead of like casting primordial wave at this caster all the way across the map, or if they're melee, just across the map. Uh, you can use this on yourself and then just flame shock them. And if, as long as you have your flame shocks out and you use this on yourself, it'll still give you the buff for your lava burst. And when you lava burst, you'll hit all the targets still. So very, very good uh, trick you can use with Primordial Wave. And then uh, Surge of Power. Surge of Power is obviously very, very good because if you're going up against double melee, you can have like the the flame shock ability. So every time you use Earth Shock, you get. An additional effect on your next ability so like flame shock will spread to another target your lava burst will reduce the cooldown on your elementals more and then your frost shock will freeze them in place which is like my my most used probably effect of surge of power uh some other things to note too so like times that i would use primordial fury or refreshing waters would be like in like a battleground setting or like a world pvp setting so like there are situations where i do like to use it because like the extra healing when you're on your own and you don't have a healer is actually very nice. But it's it's very niche and I don't really use it that often because these just add so much more utility and defensives that I'd rather take these. All right, now the Stormkeeper build. I've been running this a lot more lately and I've been having a lot more fun with it. I think, I think the reason is because it's the, the meta is just so bursty now that like in my in my last video, that I did called everything wrong about shaman. I went over this a little bit on how like one of our defensives is just having good damage, right? And so if, if you're able to start off the game very aggressive and keep some pressure on them almost instantly, it puts you in a very good spot. So it, it's weird because like as elemental, you want to avoid damage, but at the same time, it's like you almost have to put yourself in the situation to do damage and receive damage in order to keep them away from you. So it's kind of like a catch-22 situation. It's it's obviously not ideal and it always doesn't work out, but that's almost what you have to do. You don't really have any other option. So the way this, that this differs from my Lava Burst build is that we're not running Swelling Maelstrom, we're not running the Ice Fury with the Flux Melting, we're not running one point in the Echo Chamber, but most of the build is still relatively the same. So you're still gonna be bursting with like Primordial Wave and stuff, but this time you don't have to pre-proc a Frost Shock in order to get more damage with it. You don't have to worry about casting Ice Fury at all, but you do have to worry about casting Stormkeeper now. Uh, Stormkeeper is a lot more obvious that you're going to be bursting, because a lot of people don't understand what you're going to do with Ice Fury. And that that also becomes is because like Ice Fury is also used for the Elemental Blast build. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different play styles you can use with Ice Fury, so it's not always obvious that you're going to use it for bursting. Whereas Stormkeeper, it's like, it has a time limit on it. It has, to, it lasts 16 seconds and so does Primordial Wave. But if you don't use it within that time, you lose it. And so if someone sees you casting Stormkeeper, they're no, they know within 16 seconds, you're going to be trying to burst them down. And so with Stormkeeper, you, you have to take advantage of your surge of power before you use it. So you have to make sure you have enough Maelstrom. That way you can cast like two Urshocks. You want to try to cap out on Maelstrom. And then you want to use your Primordial Wave Burst. And then after that, after you already have your Stormkeeper on, you want to use an Earthshock, a Lightning Bolt, Earthshock, Lightning Bolt. And that's because your sur your Surge of Power, when you use an Earthshock, it also makes it so your next Lightning Bolt um, causes an additional two Elemental Overloads. That's fucking huge. And that's per, per Lightning Bolt. So if you do Earthshock, Lightning Bolt, two extra Overloads, Earthshock, Lightning Bolt, another two extra Overloads, right? So lots and lots of damage. You're also getting some increased uh, damage from Call of Thunder here. 
You got Anunday, which is giving you extra Maelstrom for your Purges, Cleanse Spirit, Healing Stream, Hex, Wind Shear. And this also pairs very nicely with Ancestor Wolf Affinity because now you can do it while you're in Ghost Wolf. This build, pretty much the same, but you're just kind of swapping out the Ice Fury for the Stormkeeper, but it has a longer cooldown now, so you have to keep that in mind too. You want to try to use this more so on a go, so like pair it around your teammates burst and try to get it when they've already gone through defensives or make them use their defensives and then last but not least we got the elemental Bl blast build so this one uh is a little bit trickier to use because it requires a lot more setup you have to use a lot of globals in order to pull this off with 100 percent effectiveness and if you want to look at the rotation for this you can watch one of my first videos uh where i go over the rotations but I'm also probably going to do an updated guide which shows like all the bursts for each different build. That way people understand how to effectively use each type. So the things that make this build strong are things like Magma Chamber, which increases the damage of your Elemental Blast. So kind of similar to before with the Earth Shocks, but now we're swapping it for Elemental Blast, right? And then now we're running Ice Fury again with Electrified Shocks this time. This causes uh your frost shocks to damage additional enemies so it has cleave now but they also take the main part of this is that they take 15 percent increased nature damage but it only lasts six seconds so there's a very 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 tight window on this in order to pull off the rotation of, like perfectly because you only have time really in your rotation to pull it off with one frost shock because that's too many globals at that point if you if you use another frost shock to recharge this electrified shocks it's already too many globals and you won't be able to get the full burst rotation in. So we're still running Stormkeeper here. Um, we're running Eye of the Storm still, but now we're also running Elemental Equilibrium. So when you deal Fire, Frost, Nature damage, which Elemental Blast combines all of those, which is, I'm going to get to another point in a second with that. It'll increase all the damage you deal by 15%, but it, only, it can only occur once every 30 seconds. So this is a very, very strong uh, damage modifier. And then you also have Lightning Rod, which um, after using I want to blast uh, the target that you hit, they you you can deal 20% additional damage on them with your Lightning Bolt. So you want to make sure to use Elemental Blast first, which will also trigger Elemental Equilibrium. Then you want to use like your Stormkeeper, but you also have to weave in your Elemental Blast in order to increase its damage, right? But before you even do all that, you need to make sure you use your Electrified Shocks because this will increase the nature damage they take. So again, we'll go over the burst rotation in another video or you can check out my previous video. That's mostly what makes the Elemental Blast strong is basically just damage modifiers going into an already hard hitting ability. But the thing that makes this part of the burst rotation is you have to run this with Nature Swiftness because this will allow you to instant cast one elemental blast but this has a one minute cooldown but so does your stormkeeper right so you can get off a pretty consistent one minute very strong burst now the reason that this is a bit weaker is because again you have to cast a lot more globals you have to get like two elemental blasts off your storm both your stormkeeper lightning bolts you have to get your frost shock uh damage modifier and you also have to have like full maelstrom so if someone sees you like building maelstrom casting ice fury dropping like sky fury totem your fire elemental your storm keeper and you got nature swiftness on and it's it's just like at that point it's so obvious what's coming and they probably already have a defensive on that like even though it hits so hard usually they can outlive it and then because you don't have anything for basically a whole minute for damage because now you're not really running any good instant cast damage now you're kind of just like a sitting duck for a while now you're just running around using utility so i don't know maybe even in this build you'd want to run like primordial fury or refreshing waters but an it's nice to pair with this so like the elemental blast build definitely has some drawbacks but that being said it is very very strong very hard hitting probably could still use another nerf honestly but it would need some more like strong consistent damage somewhere else i'm not sure where you would really put that in this build but um maybe maybe something to do with like reducing lightning bolts cast even more maybe uh maybe unrelenting calamity instead of like 0.25 seconds maybe it's like 0.75 seconds or something i'm not sure 
but they definitely need to do something more balanced around this build to make it more viable. I want to go over PvP talents, and then we're going to go over the Shaman build. So, PvP talents. Um, I almost never take Swelling Waves, but I could see this being useful, again, in, like, BGs or whatever, if you want to use, like, the healing talents up here. Tidebreaker, never use. Precog. This could have some good effects, but it's generally underwhelming compared to the other talents, just because, like, again, the top two viable builds right now are the Lava Burst and the Stormkeeper builds. And those rely on a lot of instant cast damage, so like precog, you don't you don't really have to cast a whole lot anyways, so you don't really gain too much value from this. Um, seasoned winds not very useful unless like maybe you're going up against double caster, but taking something like grounding and sky fury just have so much more value than uh, seasoned seasoned winds. But this still could be pretty useful, especially against like maybe shadow priest where like all of their damage is the same spell school and maybe kick like mind games or something. But uh, Grounding Totem, obviously very, very strong. You basically just redirect all spells within 30 yards um, for three seconds. This includes things like Freezing Trap, like CC effects, actual damaging abilities like Hodge. So like from a Paladin, like a stun. And then Unleash Shield, this got nerfed recently. Uh, so instead of Earth Shield Root, going for four seconds now it's two seconds so it's like basically nothing like by the time you knock them away and they finally plant their feet it's already been like two seconds so it, they basically eliminated that whole point of it they, they like removed it from the dr which is nice but it's like it's only two seconds so it's like whether or not it's on the dr doesn't even matter anymore so it, it kind of got fucked a bit but it's still pretty useful especially in double melee comps just like getting someone away from you uh especially if you have slows on them it's like as if you're running with like an unholy dk or someone that has like consistent slows like maybe ass or rogue this could be even more useful because now when you knock them away they're slowed so they can't catch up as fast but it's also nice on maps like blade's edge where you can knock them off the bridge counter strike i've been getting a lot of value out of this recently just because a lot of people just don't even kill it and you just redirect all the damage that they deal back to them and it i've had it like kill people before it's very it can be very very strong if people don't kill it but that being said it also has like one health and people just auto attack it and it can die so it can have a lot of value but can but it can also basically have zero value there's like no in between it either has all the value or no value i'm going to get into something with counter strike in a bit here too another point uh, spectral recovery this almost isn't ever worth it because you just you don't sit in ghost wolf too long but that being said this does pair very nicely with like spirit wolf here so like if you do plan on being in ghost wolf a lot like maybe in battlegrounds or something or i don't know maybe you could use a sin arena try it out um you would have some reduced damage taken while healing and having some increased movement speed so d definitely could be useful Traveling Storms, I never use this because I don't like the idea of it knocking your allies away. And I don't know, again, it's just like there's more other useful talents. Maybe you could use this on like Blade's Edge or something, or this would actually be kind of cool to use in like maybe Eye of the Storm or something like that. Static Field Totem, it's an, it's again, it's like Counter-Strike where it's extremely useful, but it got nerfed in its health percentage. So now instead of like it, it taking a few hits to kill now it can just basically be auto attack this is four percent of your health but like four percent of 400k that's like uh 16 000 health like almost every ability in the game does more than that so this basically just gets one hit so it, again but if people don't kill it and they don't understand how it works then they're just gonna stay in the area and it's very nice to keep people away from you for a little bit but most people understand it by now just because it's so obvious what it's doing that people just instantly kill it now static field counter strike grounding all these totems here there is a trick you can use with totemic projection where say like i cast out i put down like an earth bind an earth grab um a counter strike static field when you use totemic projection and you move them to a different location they all stack on top of each other so Someone trying to target like a specific totem is almost impossible. So they almost, they like have to go through all of the totems. They have to destroy all of the totems before they can basically get to the one that they need. Uh, they might get lucky and target it the first time or something, but 
this is a this is a good trick you can use not only to delay the amount of time it takes for them to get to the totems to kill them but also uh so it might trick them into targeting the wrong totem so that's a neat little trick you can do i haven't really tested it out myself that much but it seems like it could be pretty fun but it, again it's it's one of those things where this shaman build that i'm going to talk about here in a second just has so many different options that we need to take that you almost like can't even dedicate a full talent point there so most of the time i'm going to be running grounding totem sky fury but if i'm running up against like double melee i'm usually going to run like maybe static field counter strike maybe static field unleash shield um depending on like how mad i get at people killing counter strike i i really wish blizzard would like just make it so totems can't just be auto attacked very frustrating but now to go over the main shaman trees. So a lot of things uh, you'll see that I've talked about in my previous videos. In, in my previous videos, I kind of just talked about all the talents that were viable and good and what I would possibly see changing around. But now that the season's been progressing quite a bit now, uh, I do have like a basically solidified general selection of talents that I'd like to go over. So this is my main build here for Shaman in general cases. Uh, I'm running Greater Purge. This is preference. Uh, Greater Purge is nice just because you get an instant two effects every 12 seconds. So you don't have to rely on yourself using so many globals on Purge all the time. Now you can just like get two every 12 seconds. And that's actually pretty decent. And you don't have to just use so many globals. Uh, I, I use Totemic Recall. This is very nice if I want to reset like Grounding or Static Field Totem or Counter-Strike, something like that. That way I can get more value out of it because sometimes people don't expect the second Totem, right? Gust of Wind, obviously a, very good to get, gain some distance, but I don't, I don't really want to go over every single talent because you can see that in my first couple videos, but I am running like Spirit Walker's Grace more because now you especially as you run like Stormkeeper or the Elemental Blast build, you're gonna need this more because now you have to cast a bit more. And this is nice because now you can get off like a free Hex or your Stormkeeper cast, but you also have to be careful because you can be stunned while under this effect, but you're immune to silence and interrupts. So Spirit Walker's A just very, very strong. It just sucks that Spirit Walker's Grace has a two minute cooldown and they can dispel it. And I've been getting instantly dispelled a lot of times. And so that's been pretty frustrating. Another thing that I think Blizzard needs to change like immediately. I've been running Earth Grab and Tremor Totem pretty almost unanimously. Just because like there's so many classes that just have a fear, charm, or sleep effect. You got like Warlocks, Priest, Evokers, Warriors. Just like every single class has like one of these effects now. And you almost like just always have to run it. At least in 3v3 or like bgs or solo shuffle like maybe 2v2 you might be able to spec out a tremor but like if you're in a 3v3 like 90 percent of the time there's gonna be a class that fears you or has charm or sleep cap totem this is like probably a point that you could sacrifice for something else but generally i keep this in um instead of going astral bulwark for reduced damage i've been kind of specking into planes traveler this is a little bit nicer now too since the burst meta is kind of it's it's gone down a bit it's weird because like the the sustained damage throughout the fight is higher now but like the burst is down a bit i, I mean there's still classes that fucking can destroy you but this is nice because now you can use astral shift more often throughout an arena match and it increases its duration so you have reduced damage taken for longer um we're still running lightning lasso very very good ability to go in for a kill yeah, and so, like, if I had a Shaman on the enemy team, I would probably spec out a Cap Totem and go into Cleanse Spirit to be able to get rid of Hexes. And then another thing I could see going into would be, like, Elemental Warding. The only problem with Elemental Warding is, like, you need two points for just 4% damage reduction. And it almost doesn't feel worth it against casters, especially if I could get, like, Totemic Recall and just get a Grounding for their burst. I feel like, I feel like Grounding a Mind Games cast would be a lot more useful than just 4% reduced magic damage taken, but I don't know, that's something for like theory crafters. Overall, those are all of my builds. I just wanted to update this, let you guys know like what things have changed, the how the builds have changed, um, and like how just the talents have evolved throughout the season and what talents I've become more accustomed to using more often. 
not again not much has really changed throughout the elemental builds they're basically pretty much the same but now that some things have been nerfed you have a little bit more options something i did forget to mention is that some people have been taking searing flames but i would still recommend magma chamber especially with the tier set um <laughs> i only have two pieces uh your your lightning bolt lava burst increases the damage of your earth shock earthquake by five percent this also works for elemental blast Stacks up to five times, so 25%, but this got nerfed, so now it's only 12.5%. And then your, the four set increases the... Or when you cast Earthshock, Elemental Blast, Earthquake, increases your mastery by 8%. So this is a very good synergy for Elemental because, like, you're constantly weaving between these abilities anyways. Your Lava Burst, Lightning Bolts, Earthshocks, Elemental Blast, whatever. And so this is basically just some really good passive damage increase. But the mastery is really nice because... When you cast Earthshock and you use your Lightning Bolts for Stormkeeper, the increased mastery gives you more of a chance for your overloads. So that's something to note there that I, I can't wait to get the four set and test that out a bit more and see how many more Lightning Bolts I get. But So that's it for the updated builds guide video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Um, w what are your guys' favorite builds? Is there something you've been testing out that seems pretty good? Uh, any of you testing out the Elemental Blast build? want to jump in and tell me how that's been going for you guys there is some balancing that blizzard needs to do with shaman if you want to again check that out in one of my other videos you can all right guys that's it for the video and i'll see you guys in the next one